So take a look at the substrate or the mosaic base that you'll be using. It's super, super lightweight, which is wonderful, and it's rated for an exterior use. It is what's called a cementious backer board. It is foam in the middle, and it has a thin layer of concrete on either side. So it makes it rated okay to use outside. It's actually a product that's designed for installing uh, showers. So it's, it's rated okay for uh, moisture outside. Um, you cannot screw into this like you do wood. So I've gone ahead and pre-installed um, the hanger for you. So you don't have to worry about that. Just a note, you never want to use wood outside ever. Uh, wood is an organic substance and it moves and as soon as that organic substance moves your grout will crack Moisture will get in and your mosaic will fail. I always say you can make a beautiful mosaic, but if it falls apart It's not so pretty So the very first thing you're going to do to create your mosaic is to set your border. You have these tiny little molded glass tiles and you're going to set them along the edge. You're going to do that for two reasons. Number one, I feel it creates a visual frame for your mosaic. It looks nice. But second of all, it's for safety reasons. You'll be working with some glass. This is cut glass and it has some sharp edges. And I don't want a situation where these edges are sticking out on the side that anything anyone could get hurt. So this creates kind of a safety border as well. I've included these for the colored ones for the corners just because I think they're fun. But to give you an idea what you're going to do, you're going to create just a bead of your, mo of your mosaic glue and start with one of these in the corner. If you've got too much glue, I like to use a um, Q-tip or a cotton swab to just sort of spread it out a little bit. This is a little tedious because it's really important that these pieces are straight and even. The rest of your mosaic is kind of freeform, but this there's nothing freeform about this. You want these to be nice and straight and even. So this will take you a while to do, but it's worth it. So I have a pencil here. Sometimes I use a pencil to sort of arrange them. Also, just a plain ruler is sometimes uh, ben beneficial to just sort of make sure they're straight and in line. So there's not much to this other than that. You can see I've got them close. Almost touching is where you want to be. And this is about the right amount of glue. You'll notice these have a scored side underneath and a flat side on front. You want to make sure that this scored side is going down. It helps with adhesion, plus that's how the glass is designed to go. It's not designed to go up. If you were to use it up when we grout, all the grout would stick in there and it would look really bad. So, this is your first step. After you get done setting all four sides um, and making sure everything's even, you'll want to wait at least 12 hours or so before you continue on with your mosaic because we want this glue to set up. And if it isn't set up as you work on your mosaic, you can knock it around and get everything kind of askew and you wouldn't want that to happen. So that's pretty simple. Once you get that done, then you can move on to the glass mosaic part. So once you've set your border, now you can move on to creating this seedy part of your sunflower. Make sure that your border lines that the glue is dried because you won't want to be bumping into these and moving them around. Um, I've done one for you and I just kind of want you to see it looks sort of seedy there and I have pre-cut if you um, have the beginner kit I have pre-cut glass for you in all these tiny little pieces so those will what you what you use for the center um, 
We don't have to be exact, but I want it to be sort of the same um, size as this one. So sort of eyeball it and do a sort of a pencil mark, light pencil mark, where you want this seedy part to go. Um, move this over for you. You're going to use your glue pretty heavily and squirt out. Of course, it won't squirt for me right now. There we go. Squirt out a good amount of it right there, kind of creating a bed of, of glue. You're going to use a high-tech mosaic tool, a cotton swap, Q-tip, and sort of smush it all around there. Perfect. So here's the little pieces you're going to be using. They're kind of fiddly and tedious, and you can just use your fingers and put them in there kind of in a random order. If you get glue on your fingers, it's no big deal. This is water-based glue, and it washes off. It's not toxic at all. You might also want to use tweezers. Now, these are mosaic tweezers, so they're longer, and they have a little curve on them, which I will offer on my website. But you also can just use your regular you know, health and beauty aid tweezers. Those will work also if you don't want to be picking these things up. So another high-tech tool I use is a toothpick. You don't want any piece um, sticking up. You want to make sure that every little piece is lying flat, mostly because we will be grouting this, and when you go be grouting it when it's finished, and you don't want any of these sharp, this is glass, any of these sharp things sticking up on you. Um, I also, oops, you see how it's sticking up? Now, I've got some glue on the top. That is not a big deal. When we grout, all that glue will come off. I've included in your kit some of these fabulous little glass um, glass pebbles, and I like to use them to sort of fill in here, and they um, they look sort of like seeds, I think. But make sure if you're using these little glass uh, pebbles that they have plenty of glue underneath them to um, hold them together. So I'm just going to kind of keep working these and moving them around, making sure once again that everything is flat. I've sort of mixed up the colors of glass, so there's some sort of dark brown, and there's some amber, and there's some reddish pieces as well, so kind of assort those. And there we go, we're working on it, and I'll keep going. If you've ordered the beginner kit, I cut all of this beautiful art glass for you, and I wanted to kind of give you an idea what this glass is. Some of it is beautiful like this. It's transparent. Some of it is opaque. You cannot see through it. Um, some of it may be textured. Isn't that pretty? And some of them always, um, the, the shades, the hues will vary a little bit. I like to kind of mix them up for you. But I cut these kind of in very random shapes for you. They're supposed to look organic. And when you put them together, it's random once again of how you do it. So, kind of give you an idea of what I do here. And I'm looking for random shapes and sizes. Um, nothing in particular. I'll probably refine these and kind of do some random shapes for you. So this is kind of the process. And then you can take these beautiful shapes and put them together. So you've set your CD part. That's all done. Now you get to move on to creating your sunflower and doing your sunflower petals. Um, you'll see that all the pieces that I've pre-cut for you, I've, I've laid them out here on a tray. Um, even though these are pre-cut, let's remember that this is glass and sometimes there could be some glass shards or glass dust and you really don't want it on your workspace. And also remember, this is glass. See these things right here? They are pointy and sharp. So take care and um, if you have kids you're working with, um, lots and lots of supervision. So, once again, this fabulous water-based glue that you don't need to worry about. I have sort of eyeballed how big it is. It doesn't have to be exactly the same size as the other one, but I've um, kind of told myself I'm going to go 
about this far out. Um, the amount of glue you need is not much, probably not as much as you had to use in when you created your CD bed. I like to start with my the biggest pieces first. Um, of course, nothing wants to come out for me. There we go. And maybe I'll just do this and use my Q-tip to, oops, to spread things around. There we go. Like I said, start with these big elements first. It doesn't really matter what direction you go with them because we're setting randomly. Um, maybe I'll put that big one going the other direction. Now I'm going to think about filling in with the smaller pieces. Um, you're going to still have some gaps, but we're going to talk about those gaps a little bit later. So don't worry about gaps, but this is sort of like, um, I guess, a puzzle, right? Not lots of rights or wrong here. Kind of mix up your colors. Oh, I like this orange one. Maybe I'll put that there. That's kind of interesting. Um, put that one right there. Maybe move that over a little. You can see that there's not a... So this piece right here is a little transparent, so I'm going to make sure that there's plenty of glue underneath that transparent piece. I'm just going to kind of work it around till I get everything to fit the way I want it to go. And this glue is lovely because uh, if you change your mind, See how it slides around? You can always pick it up and move it around, rearrange. You're not totally committed to everything. Um, put that there. Once again, the keyword is random. And don't stress out if you get any glue on top of your glass. We can manage that once we start grouting. So you can see that our petal design, once again, this uh, keyword is random. It's just sort of put together. If you do have wheeled nippers, and you want to use them, you can refine a little bit and get your, your fits a little bit closer. Um, I always caution you with wheeled nippers to uh, nip down so glass doesn't go flying across the room. And I always nip into a container so you get all your little shards. So I wanted to just make this piece a little bit smaller. So see all the little shards in there? So you want to kind of keep those contained. But I want to put that right there, so and it just wasn't the size I wanted. So I think I'll put that one right there. That seems to be a pretty good fit. And I'm liking the way it looks. Next, we'll think about filling in these gaps and doing our leaves. So I finished setting all of the yellow and amber and oranges shades of the petals. But you can see that there's some gaps here. Um, number one, I always say grout is your friend. Grout will fill in most all of these and it, it'll look fine. But I have these beautiful little things. Like these are the glass petals again and these are in kind of a pretty goldy yellow and it's fun to fill these little gaps with those. Once again, you need plenty of glue. You can use your fingers to put things in here. If you can see what I'm doing here, let's see if I get a little closer. Um, I see that gap there. I'm gonna use my tweezers, grab a hold of my tweezer here and put that in there. You'll wanna make sure that when you put those pebbles in, that they are connecting with the glue. Um, if, if it's too big of a pebble for that space, choose a smaller one. 
Um, I'm going to choose some real small ones here, make sure there's glue on that. Um, so that's what I'm going to do with a lot of my gaps, and they're really pretty and shiny. Once we grout, um, let's see, there's a section here I want to do. Get a little bit of glue in there, get a little bit of glue in there, a little bit of glue in there, a little bit of glue in there. Can you see those places? And I'm going to put some pebbles in there. Some of the spaces that are bigger can take a bigger pebble, obviously. And uh, put one in there. Where else have I got? Got one in there. And I think those are kind of fun. You can add some at the outside if you want. Remember, this is your mosaic art, so really you're creating it and doing it the way you like. I'm going to move this over maybe a little bit. There we go. Give me some room for some more pebbles right there. Perfect. We got them. Oh, I see a place right here where I'd like to put a little pebble. Nope, that one's too big. Boom. And we're done. Next, we're going to be adding the leaves. And once again, when we add the leaves, the keyword is random. Now you're on the home stretch. You get to finish these two beautiful sunflowers with this array of gorgeous blue glass. I've pre-cut all this glass for you, so that's in the beginner kit. Uh, one of the things I want you to do is just use a regular uh, paint brush or some sort of brush and brush off your substrate. I want to make sure that there's no little glass shards on there, anything that would get in your way or cut you. Um, to fill in here, with this blue, it's absolutely, totally random. Mix up your colors. Um, this is sort of a chill out sort of time because just sort of maybe listen to some music, uh, pour a glass of wine or a nice cup of tea and um, kind of play with it and see what goes where. No right or wrong. Once again, if you have wheeled nippers, that helps a little bit in that you can refine and go oh I just need a little bit of nip there to make this one fit exactly where I want it to go so that's a little helpful but it's it's absolutely not necessary you're going to get them um, glued or set as close as you can together but remember grout is your friend and you will have some some gaps so that's okay don't think about leaving leaving room for grout Lordy, lordy, grout always seems to find its way. So I'm going to chill out and finish this beautiful sunflower. Part, you've made this beautiful mosaic, and now you get to grout it. I love it. So I have sent you about six ounces of black sanded grout. And generally, the uh, ratio of grout to water is about six to one. So I have one and a half ounces of water here. I'm going to get ready to grout. So I have all my equipment here. I've just got the little stir sticks. Here in my studio, I save nasty old spatulas and I use those for stirring grout as well. Got my gloves because it will be messy. Have my little sponge with the grout float on the side. A spray bottle of water just in case I need it. Uh, a bucket of, wa of plain water here um, just to wash off the back of the mosaic. Lots and lots of paper towels and some old uh, terry cloth towels for buffing. So that's what you're going to need to start to grout. It's important when you mix your grout, I'll show you a, in a video next, um, to do it very slowly. Add the water very slowly. We're going for a consistency of like 
cookie dough or maybe mashed potatoes. Uh, you don't want your grout to ever be too runny. Before you start grouting though, I'm going to ask you to reserve and set aside oh, about a tablespoon of black grout. And don't mix it, keep it to the side and keep it dry. And I'll tell you why later why we need to do that. So we're going to get ready to mix the grout. You see I've laid um, some old cardboard down here because it's a pretty messy thing. I've got uh, my six ounces of grout with one teaspoon or tablespoon reserved. And I'm going to add the water a little bit at a time here and um, kind of stir. I'm using an old, um, I save like old cottage cheese and sour cream containers. They're perfect for this because... You can just throw them away, and I hate to waste anything. So I'm stirring a little bit more. Starting to come together. A little bit more water. And I think we may just have it here. Scrape the sides. Make sure and stir from the bottom as well. Once again, this was about six ounces of grout, and it was one and a half ounces of water that I am adding real slowly. And I think we've got what we want here. Let me kind of see, to show you what I have here. It's perfect. Kind of like some soft cookie dough, I think. And we're going to be ready to grout. this beauty. I'm so excited. This is my favorite part because I call this the big reveal. Um, you really get to see the mosaic come to life. And I like to use this black grout um, because it really creates drama. I've stirred my um, grout here and I like to use these old spatulas, but you can just kind of use your fingers here and blob it on. You have a grout float on the side of your sponge. And this is what I want you to use to smush the grout in and smush it around. You could use your fingers, but if you do, I caution you to do it very gently because let's remember this is glass and there might be some sharp edges. So that's the beauty of this grout float. Um, kind of smush it in and smush it around. There's no science to this. The fun part. So when you're working, I want to show you what happened here. I kind of staged this for you, but if a piece falls off, don't panic. It shouldn't here, but sometimes it happens. Just put it aside and then just go on with your mosaic, and we will deal with that later. You can see I put down some old cardboard here because this is sort of a messy process. And the grout I gave you, by the way, goes a long way. You kind of spread it around and you'll see that you'll have plenty of grout. One of the things I want you to do then is go on the sides. And I want to see this grout smushed into all the sides. It will stain the side of your substrate. It'll stain it black. But that is a good thing because we want it to be black anyway. So I want to go along and get grout you can see me do this on all the sides and smush it in on the sides of the little glass tiles. Here's that part, that, that piece that fell off, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Because you don't want to slow up on your grout. What the grout will do after about 20 or 30 minutes is um, set up. And you don't want that to happen. If you find that for some reason your grout is drying up, maybe you have a really dry room you're working on, I keep a spray bottle of just plain water. And if you have to, you can just give it a slight mist. And that'll add some moisture to it while you're working on it. Messy, messy. I love it. And 
we're almost done. You can see I work pretty fast. And we are finished. Doesn't that look beautiful? Don't you love your mosaic? <laughs> I'm using my fingers here, but you'll notice I'm not jamming it in here. I'm being pretty careful because re I'm remembering that this is glass. So, we'll let this sit for about five minutes and then we're going to go back to it. So we've let your mosaic sit in the grout for about five minutes and it sets up a little bit. And the next step we're going to do is what I call the dry method. We are not going to take a damp sponge to it. You may have seen uh, tile setters do that, but we're working with a glass mosaic and we don't want to use a wet sponge. When you use a wet sponge, you pull the grout away from your mosaic and we don't want to do that. We want to keep the grout even with our little cut glass pieces. So what you need here are lots of paper towels, and you're just going to rub in and rub off. The paper towels keep it dry, and also you're protecting your hands from this glass mosaic. If there were to be anything sharp, you have these paper towels sort of insulating you. You can be pretty aggressive here, because um, you're kind of rubbing in and rubbing off, and you'll see this beautiful mosaic start to come to life. I'm loving it already. So you might go through a lot of paper towels. That's all right. That's kind of part of the deal. Now you have your little your little glass pebbles here. Uh, don't be dismayed if one were to happen to fall out. You know it happens. They're round and it's hard for the adhesive sometimes to work on those. And if it were to fall out, don't worry about it. The grout will fill in at that place and, and you don't need to worry about replacing it. So, oh, more paper towels. Let me get some clean paper towels here. Ooh, it's starting to look so pretty. Oh, there's the place where, right here, I don't know if you can see that, where the piece fell out. So I'm going to clean out that grout and just kind of not worry about it right now. Here's the extra piece. I've kept it aside and we will deal with that in a few minutes. Now you are going to take the wet sponge part of your sponge and I'm going to ask you just to use it on the sides just to kind of clean up the sides there kind of smoosh it in there and make it look a little nicer and neater. like that. And you can use it to clean up the back if you'd like to. I don't really worry about the back. Nobody sees it. But the back can get a little messy too. So the wet sponge will come in happy there. Ha uh, come in handy there. So there we go. Once again, we're going to let this sit for a little while and then we're going to come back to it and buff it and clean it up with a terry cloth towel. Look how it's starting to come to life. Okay, so this beautiful mosaic's been sitting here for about, I think, about eight minutes I've let it sit here. I'm so anxious to get it cleaned up. I have a plain terry cloth towel here, nasty one that you don't care about, and I'm going to buff it pretty well and clean it up. You'll see as you're buffing it that if you accidentally got some glue on top of your glass, it's going to start to show up. Now, it's loosened up quite a bit now. And I can get it off probably with just my fingernail. If you don't want to do that, remember the cute, the, um, pardon me, the, uh, yeah, toothpick. That's the name of it. And that'll help kind of get some of the little pieces of glue off as well. You'll see them stick out. So I'm rubbing pretty aggressively. Once again, if something falls off, now's the time to find out. We can fix that. I'm going to show you how in a minute. But I'm still buffing and cleaning up. Clean up the sides here a little bit. Now this seedy part here was a little bit deeper. I'm going to give it just a little mist of water just on the corners. And kind of clean that up a little bit more. Yep. 
Yeah, that's what I want to see. It's looking beautiful. I love it. I've got some cleanup to do yet. Uh, some of the little pieces of um, glue will start to show up, and I'm going to clean those off. And then we're next going to address that little piece that fell off. So I've uh, buffed it some more, cleaned it up some more. It's shining. It's so, so pretty. Cleaned off some of the glue. Uh, I used a pokey tool. This is a, um, a dental tool. You could use a screwdriver or that toothpick works pretty well as well. So I got all that off. But remember this little piece that fell off when we were grouting? And I said, don't worry about it. We, I cleaned this off as best I could. See that little place? And we're going to just glue it back on. Just the tiniest bit of glue there. And put it back on. Now, that powder, grout powder that you set aside, I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of that on there. There we go. Kind of smush it around there with my fingers. It's kind of messy, isn't it? But I just sort of smushed it in there with my fingers. And I'm just going to take my spray bottle of water and just give it a little mist. Take my finger and just sort of work it in there. Take a paper towel or my old um, terry cloth towel and blot it. Just sort of blot it best I can. And it's a little messy in that little area there, but I'm going to leave it messy for now and give that glue about 24 hours or, or so to set up. And then I'll come back and I'll clean it up when we do our final clean. So the piece that fell off is all fixed and it looks like you're all done. So I've let this mosaic sit, the grout sit, for about two days, for 48 hours. Now it's time to give it its final buff and clean. I've mixed some plain water, this is not Windex, some plain water with white distilled vinegar. Probably four parts water and one part uh, vinegar. And I'm going to spray it down and get it nice, nice and wet. What that vinegar is going to do is take any haze or any grout that's left on your glass off and clean up that little area that we had to fix as well. And I have a clean um, towel, and I'm just going to give it its final buff and get any um, grout haze off, if it happened to be there, um, get it finally all clean. Then you can display it with pride. You can, of course, uh, display it inside or outside. Um, it would really be welcoming at your front door. Wouldn't that be pretty and cheerful? Or on your deck or patio. I've displayed um, all of my mosaics in the backyard. Um, I have a wooden fence and it's pretty cheerful out there, especially in the winter. So congratulations. I know you've made a gorgeous mosaic.